Let me start the recorder first. Okay, the recorder is on. This is the second portion of the recorder recording for today's class. Okay, so that's good. All right. So what we need to do is to find out, you know, what is UUID? It's the universal uh, device, you know, ID, and that turned out to be necessary. So the CFG file that I gave you, you know, does not contain that part because it's all unique. I cannot give you a single UUID, and it will work across all devices. So what I'm going to demonstrate next is the process to find out which UUID is going to work for you. Okay? Yep, go ahead. So should I be booting off of my flash drive if I'm going to follow? Yes, if you boot from the flash drive, you will be able to follow all of, all of these steps. In fact, for those of you who can make your rescue disk, uh, go through the partitioning and have Grub installed, you can plug in your flash drive, boot from the flash drive, and then plug in your external hard drive and follow these steps. So I'm just going to leave, let you guys you know, spend some time here. Um, so you want to no, I follow those steps? Okay. Yes, this one I'm not sure is done yet because I rebooted the computer, yeah. but I'm not sure whether it was done by the time I rebooted the computer. So I'm, I'm going to have to redo okay. this one. Okay. Wait, 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 hold on. Oh. Is this my drive? That's your drive. Okay. Yep. Oh, and you're going to tell me how to fix it. Yeah, exactly. So I'll give you guys some time to start it up while I you know, make your rescue uh, flash drive. Yes. Remember you tried to boot and do the persistence and then you want to do me grub here? Yeah. And but, but grub was not installed. We could not get through that step last week. Okay. But I went home, oh. you know, and I retried all the steps and it was successful. So it was something in the process, you know, the last week that I did that made it not successful. In fact, today we went through the same process and it worked. Okay. So grub install worked. Um, following the steps that I described. All right. So I need to use a flash drive for that, not through this one. If you, do you have your flash drive I just, imaged? I just want to use this one. Well, you still need your rescue disk. Rescue you know, disk. Well, you know, it would be best if you have a rescue disk. Do you have a rescue disk? No. Anyone okay. Have a, spare, I can borrow. a spare drive? Yeah, a spare drive. I can borrow. Uh, well, you know what? For today, you know, give me your external hard drive and I'll you know, try to do it here. Yeah, that's 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 exactly that's because I forgot to do one step. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So sure. what you want to do is to take out the external hard drive. Do you have your rescue yeah, flash yeah, drive? Yeah. Okay. So boot with your rescue drive, okay. so it will start up the uh, the GUI environment. Okay. And then plug in your external hard drive so that we can you know, okay. finish all that step. I don't I don't use anything except I just add the class, and you know what this is like. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So I'm going to give you guys some time to start up with your flash drive, and yours is getting burned right now. So. And I just ran out of uh, USB ports. <laughs> I got four in the front. Are there any in the back? Do you see any uh, USB ports? No, on this have, computer. You should have four in the back. It should, okay, let me... They're all used up too. <laughs> <laughs> See all of these? They're all used up for something. There's one that is extended here. Maybe I can get I it to work. tail off of one of us. Yeah. So I'll give it a try. So are you guys up in the the rescue disk? Yeah, is it up? Okay. I mean, I have a question. Yeah. Why do I have rescue disk? I mean, like, I, I would like just to have the... The rescue disk is necessary because um, that's the intermediate step to set up your external hard drive. Oh. Yeah, because if you read the instructions, you know, you cannot set up the external hard drive from Windows. You have to be able to, you have to set it up from a Linux environment. So it becomes a chicken and egg problem, right? 
the rescue disk breaks the loop because you can make the rescue disk in Windows. So once you have the rescue disk, then you have a Linux environment to complete the can rest of the in process. In this case, can I, can I have the rescue disk after? Yes, because I am going to use yours as an example. Okay. That's why. Okay, so for people who just walked into the classroom, you know, we are, I missed one step in the entire process. So if you boot with your external hard drive and it got stuck at a certain point, you know, and but it scrolled through a whole bunch of text, but it just got stuck at a certain point. That's because of this, you know, omission that I did not put in. Um, so we are going, we're going to fix that today. And it's all getting recorded, okay, so this, uh, this way we can go back and revisit all the steps. So let me just check, do we all have the rescue uh, flash drive up and running, the GUI is up and running? So now go ahead and plug in your external hard drive, okay? So wait, I have a question. Yeah. So you put in the rescue disk and the thing, the thing comes up, because I put in the rescue disk and... Uh, you I have mean to restart the computer. Oh, I have to yeah, put in your rescue disk and restart the computer. So you, you're going to boot into the Linux environment. Yep. For some reason, it's not seeing that. It's not seeing it? I think that's your expansion drive. Yeah, uh, um, I will show people, you know, because there are people still uh, getting into the Linux environment. Okay, that's okay. We'll go ahead and Okay, after you plug in your drive in Linux, open up a command line interface, open up a CLI, plug in your external hard drive, and then run this command. The command is called DMESG, and what it does is it will report back, you know, a whole bunch of messages, and it will also include, you know, uh, plugging in devices and whatnot, okay? Um, I can't do it just yet because I'm doing something, you know, else, I'm actually, uh, I, I don't have enough ports here. I'm still uh, making your rescue flash drive. If I'm on that step, should I should I back up or just wait? I Sorry, know. with this one? Oh, go ahead the and just run it. The yeah. one before I was on, I was following this one before. I mean, I'm in, I'm in group user. You're. I mean, I'm a super user right now. Group user. Super user. Um, well, you don't need to do this step because we've got your flash drive already done. So you don't need to do a VD. Yeah, you you just need to run this command after plugging in your uh, external hard drive. I can't do that just yet because I'm running something else. I don't have enough USB ports to plug in the external hard drive. Let me find out you know how close I am to getting it done. So so this way at least I have an idea. Sorry? Yeah, but that's the recorder. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So we want to do a. Yeah, we are pretty close, you know, we, 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 I've already copied 2.7 out of 2.8 gigabytes, so we're just you're probably about 30 seconds away from getting it all done. <laughs> so when we are all done with this, you know, I will try to explain, you know, what each step is doing, you know, so this way, you know, if you can absorb that information, it's great, but if you cannot, it's not a big deal, okay? Um, all right, so, now I can unplug this, and that's yours. Now, if you have not partitioned your external hard drive, you will still have to go through all these steps. So don't do it now because it will just kind of break your focus okay. if you have not partitioned and installed drive yet. Okay. okay. So we'll just kind of focus on the steps and the, the explanation of why we need to do that. Okay. So okay. So for those of you who have already partitioned your external hard drive and have grub installed successfully, this is what we need to do, okay? Plug in your external hard drive, which is what I'm gonna do now. Did you give me your external hard drive? Yes. Oh, it's right here. I did not lose it. Okay. Yep, it's, 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 already, it's already plugged in, okay. So, uh, as root, okay, so go ahead and do SU. Uh, let me move the screen up a little bit so you can all see. So run as you, as a regular user, uh, beer is the password, okay, so it's root beer. 
So just type beer all lowercase. It won't echo anything back, but that's the password. So if you see the prompt you know, with root app Debian, that's confirmation that you entered the, co the password correctly and you are now running commands as the administrator of the system. Is that okay so far? Okay. So now we can do something that is kind of important. Plug in your drive, okay? If you have done something in between, you can just unplug your drive and plug it back in. And in my case, you know, this is exactly what I'm gonna do. I will unplug the drive and then plug it back in. Okay, it doesn't hurt a thing. And just wait a moment you know, until the drive is fully recognized. And then I'm gonna run this command called DMESG. Now DMESG is really useful if you want to find out what kind of hardware is installed on your computer. But for now, the only thing I need is to find out what is the name of the drive that I just plugged in. So in this case, this drive is known as SDC. Okay, so you want to take note of that because you know, SDC is important in this case. Are there any questions at this point? No questions? All right. Um, but last time we could not install Grub. Grub yeah. So I'm going to finish up you know, that process. And so you said when you run the DMESG, so mm -hmm. is it useful uh, command to find out what kind of this drive is that? You, you can find out what is the name of the drive. The name. The name of so the drive. So this one is uh, SDC. 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 Yep. Okay. So the f the next few steps, you know, you don't want to do if you already have the partitioning and your grub installed. Okay. Because I'm I have to do it to continue the steps. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and do that you know, with your drive because that part has not been done yet. So I have to mount uh, boot image or whatever partition that is format it to FAT32, and then run the grub install command. Um, well, in fact, what I want to do is to first find out, okay, so the ISO file is copied, that's good. So the only thing I have to find out now is, the, the only thing I have to do is to do the grub install, and the instruction, I can never remember the entire command line, so I have to go to my own website to find out. Next is to grab boot. Okay, so mount grab boot img. So this way I know which partition is the boot partition. Okay, and then we can run the grub command here. Um, you can, for the most part, copy and paste the commands. Um, it's just that uh, you have to be careful because if you are not careful, you can end up you know doing the wrong thing and it will yeah, install grub to the wrong place. You know that can be bad. So how, what is the steps to make sure, is it all just like? It's just what I did. Oh. Okay, so I ran this command first. Okay. This command will, will come back with a message uh -huh. that tells me, you know, what is the partition that has, um, that is intended as the boot partition on your external hard drive. Okay. So the return message shows me that, you know, SDC2 is the partition. Mm -hmm. So that means, you know, in the next command, you know, I have to specify SDC2 as the device to install um, grub and the name of your partition is put IMG, not uh, all uppercase in the root. Oh, so that's okay. why I have to change that. Right. So okay. So last time when we ran this command, it was not successful. It, yes. it came back and said, "Okay, we couldn't do it." Yeah. So we'll try again today. Um, I did this already earlier with your drive, and that was successful. It is not booting up because we're missing that one step, but grub was installed correctly. So hopefully we're not it will. That one step. And I am hmm? this, we're not at I that am one this step. far. We're not yet. Yeah. So I got this part. That's good. Yeah. 
you want to open up a command line interface, you know, because we want to get it ready. That's it. That's it. Yep. So I went through it before and you shoved it over here, I get a boot. Uh, yours is, it's, but okay. I sent it to the wrong place, right? Hmm? I sent it to the wrong place, I created the wrong folders. It's not bootable. It's not bootable? Okay, that's there. Okay. Um, that might be a common problem to several people because of the way um, the external hard drive may be using UUID instead of MBR. That may be the problem. So I think yours is the same. It's the same. It's the same reason why it's not working. Um, so let me see. What, let me let me think about what you can what we can do here. Oh God. Because we have two separate threads right now. The one thread is to finish up the process for people who can actually boot partway and they got stuck at a certain point. And then for other people, they could not even boot because Grub could not install. And that's because it's not an MBR drive. It is a UUID, no, they, they call it a, a GUID drive. So it's not uh, compatible with the steps that we described. You have to read, you have to change the partitioning to MBR based ah. instead of GUID possible based. To, possible to do that here. Right, I but I don't want I to. But I, I don't want to interrupt the process yes. you know, at this point. So I'm, I'm just going to use my own internal drive as an example. Okay, so I will unplug your drive because you know we are not going to finish that step now. Okay, we'll do it later. Okay, okay. you know I promise you I will do it. It's just okay. not now. Professor. Yes. When I try to open the command prompt, it's This is a this is also a terminal, so you can potentially do it here, but it's not as handy. Um, we'll just go ahead and leave it. I don't know how. No, it's, your drive is not. Your drive is having issues. I I do not have all in. That's a it's reporting a. Your drive is not working correctly. Um, try not to do it this way. Okay. Plug it in directly. Plug it in. Yeah, if you can't, there's not much you can do now. So go ahead and just turn on the computer. Plug it in directly to one of the okay. parts down there. Yeah. Um, okay, so the, the problem that we were seeing was um, the drive was not working properly. And that has to do with using the extension cord of USB to hook up to an external hard drive. The USB cable basically became too long, and the length of a USB cable affects the quality of the signaling of the electrical signal. The longer the cable, the more it degrades. So at a certain point, okay, it will basically start to have errors. And that's why you, know, you don't want to use a very long extension cable on external hard drives or anything that is high speed. Yep. And that's why you know you only have shorter cables you know, that comes with the drive. You know, they don't give you like a six foot cable. Yeah, yeah that's pretty short. Same with mine, right? Small. Yeah, yours is reasonably short. Okay. Really? It's not like really, really short, but it's good. good? It's, it's oh. a good size. Yeah. All right. So for people who could boot 
but at a certain point it stopped. Let me show you, you know, what to do with it. So, so which means we cannot put it from here. It's better from slowly. Yeah, you you cannot do anything just yet. Okay, I'll I'll fix those problems later. So once again, you know, we'll do a SU. So we become root user. Okay, so open up a CLI. Make sure that you're root user at this point. Um, run the MESG. Okay. Um, mine is known to be uh, SDB already, so I'm good with that. Okay. The next thing you want to do is to do a. Um, the next thing you want to do is to mount your um, boot partition. Okay. So on your desktop, you should see you know B O O T or B O O T I M G. You know depending on how you label the drive. Okay. So right click on that icon and then click mount. Okay. Is that okay? And then what we want to do is to do a grab. So do a mount grab and then whatever that name of the label is. So you want to do a mount, grab, you know, B-O-O-T, you know, if you follow the instructions, if you change the instructions, you can, uh, you have to change what you're looking for. This has to be uppercase. It's whatever label you chose when you partition the hard drive. So in your case, it is B-O-O-T-I-F-G, but it's lowercase, because I chose to use lowercase when, I, when we did it. Okay. Is that okay? Did it come back with a drive letter? Like a slash DEV slash SD. I think on these computers it should appear as C1, C2, or something like that. Yep. So yours is C2, SDC2. Okay, that's good. So remember that name. And in your case, it's SDC1, and yours is SDB1. Okay. All right. All right, so that's good. And Right? I just write it down my put IMG. Okay. All right. So in my case, you know, because mine is not set up exactly the same way, so that's why it's not, you know, showing up. Um, I have to do something slightly different. Just give me a second to do it. I think mine is SDB4, okay? So let me just double check on that. You don't, you don't need to do this step, so don't follow me, okay? <laughs> because this step can potentially be a little bit dangerous. Dangerous. Dangerous, yes. But well, I don't think it's, it's going to wipe the system here. Uh, potentially, really? you know, you can actually do something like that. F disk is not working. Hmm. I'm having an <coughs> and I lost the recorder screen. No, no, the recorder is still running here. So whatever drive letter is reporting, go ahead and go to uh, CD, use the CD command to change directory to slash DEV. Okay. And if you do it successfully, you can see that the prompt will change to root at Debian colon and then slash DEV. Is that okay? All right. And then you want to use a CD again, but this time do not use a slash and then just you know, click disk or type disk and then press the enter key and you should see the um, directory to be in slash dev slash disk at this point. Is that okay? All right. Do a ls um, and then what we want to do is to cd to buy uuid and you should see the, uh, the path being slash dev slash disk slash by UUID. Is that okay? All right. So the next step is do a LS, but don't just do, do a regular LS. Do a LS dash L. 
okay? Because it shows you how these things are linked. Now, this is the important part, because what this is doing is um, the folders in this particular directory, they are what we call soft links. In other words, they are not actually useful files. They're just a symbolic link to something else. And you want to find the entry corresponding to the drive that you just discovered a little bit earlier. Mine was uh, SDB4, okay? So you want to, there's, there's a quick way to do it. You can use ls-l and then a vertical bar and then uh, look for SDB4 in my case. In your case, it could be SDC1, C2, or whatever, you know, it, it, it reported a little bit earlier. Is that okay? Yes, it's, yeah. so ls L. I mean, this district, I didn't think that it slash um, Yeah, CD and then uh, by use by dash by dash UUID. There you go. There you go. Then you can just go ahead and run the command. Another call. ls L. ls dash L bar and then grab and then whatever drive identification you found out a little bit earlier. So if you press the enter key, you know, there should be one entry corresponding to it. Mine is 8688-2984. Yours is almost guaranteed to be different. <laughs> okay? You might want to use a piece of paper to write it down because it is going to be useful. That's what we are going to use when we set up, when we change the grub.cfg file. Yours is 8688? Yeah, this is mine. Yours is going to be different. So mine is 8688 but yours is going to be different. When you go through this process, it's going to be different. I will write this up too, okay, so in case you're not following this instruction or you cannot get to this step today, I will write it up so that you can follow these steps later on. But there's no real quick, easy way to bypass these steps, okay? We have to find out what is the UUID of the drive. Are we still okay with this step? Okay. Um, did I ask you guys to mount the drive? Yes. Yes. To mount? Okay. So it's already mounted. Um, so the next thing you have to do is to go to that folder and go back and change your grub.cfg file. Okay. Um, in your case, okay, it's not going to work with me, but in your case, it should work. So in your case, you basically use a nano and or some other editor. Your mouse pad will work too. And the path to that file is going to be slash media slash user slash boot img or boot you know depending on you know which one you use and boot grub and then grub cfg so remember the uppercase boot is dependent on how you name your partition if you name your partition lowercase boot then you have to use lowercase boot if you name your partition put IMG, then you have to use put IMG. Yep. In case, you know, for my, uh, in my case, you know, in case if I forgot, you know, uh, how can I go back, you know, for like the uppercase, lowercase? Um, Is there any way you, you can The desktop will show you. Oh, okay. On your desktop, you will see all the partitions on, of your drive. Oh, okay. Okay, so are we still okay? I'm okay. okay. So you're good? I'm looking okay. for this partition, I'm looking for the drive. Is it the just yes. <laughs> Um, you want the one that actually has your um, so partition. Yeah, so it would, in your case, it's uppercase B, lowercase O, O, T. The step for that, the one Yeah, you have to mount. You should have it mounted already. Yeah, so it's going to be. Um, so you want to do it. So you, you, you didn't run this step first. So you have to run this step first. So it's SDC1, so now you plug in SDC1 and say grab SDC1. So yours is 8982-9BEA. Okay, so write it down because we'll need that later on. Okay, so are you okay? All right. Okay, so that's good. So now we'll go back to the grub.cfg file and then do some editing. But before that, make sure you have this number or this identification, this UUID remember. Um, and then the next step is to go back to change your grub file or the grub configuration file. Mine is at a different place, so don't mind me doing this step a little bit differently because mine is different. 
So I have to go to lib live mount um, from ISO boot rub rub.cfg. It's not doing it. All right. Oh, I have it open already here. Okay, so this is the, the, the important part. This is basically what you have at this point, okay? And you want to change it to add this one here. So you want to add this phrase from ISO equals to, and then slash dev slash disk slash by dash UUID slash that UUID, and then slash whatever the ISO file name is. So only in the live persistence we're doing that, or the live? In both file? cases. In both cases? Yeah, in both cases. And you can see that you know, the 868A-29A4, that's the same number, that's the UUID of my partition. So you need to you need a line like this, but substitute the eight eight six eight a dash two nine a four with the UUID that you saw earlier. That's why it's, I told you guys to write it down because it is that's not easy to remember. This step is important. You know we need this step because this is how the boot start the bootstrap process able to find out where is the ISO file coming from in order to finish the bootstrap process. And that's why it only put it halfway when I did not include this one here. That's like a MAC address or something if you need that specifically, right? Right, it is equivalent to a MAC address in networking, except this is a UUID for mass store devices. Because you couldn't find it before because it keeps switching out drives and it's going. Right. So I get the I get the UUID. What are we doing now? I'm looking for the config file. Yeah, so you need to go to the config file and your config file because you have mounted the boot partition already. So the path to the config file is gonna be which editor do you want to use? Mousepad? Okay, so it's gonna be uh, slash media slash user slash boot slash lowercase boot rub rub dot cfg. Don't mind all those messages in the background, just you know, do, do the changes here. So you basically have to append that part, the highlighted part, you have to append it to the end of this line. End of this one, right? End of the line that starts with this line. The light persistence menu. Yeah, you got it. Yep. So save it, and um, that should do it. Yep. So there's two lines there. Yes. Right. Okay, here's the one. Yep, that's right. So you want to append the same line onto the other part. Here's what you do. It looks like it looks like Okay, so in your case, you know, it's it's all on one line. Yeah, so oh, it is all right here? Yeah. So yeah. Just don't Mine just wrap around. around. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, it's just, it's just wrapped around. So if, if I have a little... Because you have to ask you to root first. Uh, yeah. Maybe. You have to locate the file first. Oh, see, let's see where the town site is. The town is the common one. So you do okay. ignore this. All right. Oh. So if you okay, uh, it's all on one line. Yeah, so I know you have two lines. Just just right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you want to make sure that they are all right. the same line. And if you replicate that, you're going to get one. Yeah. There's one. There's one. There's one. Is it down in front of it? Yeah, it would say that because yeah, Windows doesn't have 
Save the file and um, in, in, yeah, it, mine is a little bit messed up right now because the file system itself is mounted read only and uh, it's not, uh, that's not working. So that's the last step. That is the last step to make your external hard drive work. So since you are done with it, go ahead and reboot. You can take out your, uh, well, shut down first. Shut down everything. Don't pull anything out you know, while it is live. Yeah, just do a full shutdown until everything, until power is out. Okay. Take out the flash drive, but leave the external hard drive in at the starting point. Does this need to be uppercase for the ID? Which one? The ID. The ID, it, it has to be exactly what it was. Okay. So if, it's, if, it, if it was uppercase, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Right. So you're you're the first one to reach by this whole process. <laughs> so we should just we should just go through. Yep, it should go right through that you know, the, the step that they got stuck. Okay. Was that the UUID that you saw? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not not finding it. Four. That's because okay, I know why. Because you you are not naming your ISO file dev like the ISO. That's why. Oh, so rename it the image. Yes, yes. yes I, the image. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. Okay, so if you have not saved the file or restarted yet, okay, this is, this is one more thing. Um, since most of you did not name your ISO file, that live.iso, you have to use the exact name of the ISO file. I forgot about that, sorry. <laughs> so now you have to use a flash. The image i386.iso, if you write yes, it yeah. that way. Yeah. Or you can just rename the file to that They just have to match. Okay. I, will, I will just change the name here because of here. Yeah, just change this name to whatever the file name is. So whatever the ISO file you pop in. Right. That should be at the root folder of your um, root. Partition. Yeah, right there. So you just, just name it as well. Yeah. All righty. I think next year I'm going to ask the department to buy me like a stack of, you know, 30 external hard drives so I can prepare all the hard drives prior to the class. Somebody said that. Yeah, well, yeah, 
Well, we need to. I just <laughs> ask for the money to buy oil. Well, we give money. Yeah. Okay. It's Moodle. Moodle. M O D L E. Dot uh, lostwheels. Dot edu. Yeah. Alright, so do you guys change the file It's still not working. Mm -hmm. It's Moodle dot reels dot reels dot L O S R I O S without the U. Doesn't, the mouse doesn't work. Yeah, clicking doesn't help. Right. 
just has to be self-consistent with the way you set it up. Okay. All right. So you may you rename your file to that file, right? Okay, perfect. So now we know it is from ISO will be asked. Your, that you double check that's the that's the right yeah, yeah. okay. okay. that should be it. Save this file. Okay. Okay. Save this file and then shut down the computer. Remove your flash drives and then with just the external hard drive, you should see what it is doing. Okay. 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 Basically, what the Okay, we go. Okay, we go. Okay, we go. the we go. Okay, 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 we go. So now I'm recreating the same error that I had. Okay. Is SDE1 not as not SDE1? Did you transpose the video? No, I didn't get it. We have to use the back. Yeah. Cool. Because you just transfer those two directions. That's why some people don't like a command line because you just type something. Well, I do. I'm sure we did a couple of them. So now I just wait until it runs. It will take a while. Depending on the speed of the drives, this can take 10 minutes or more. Okay. Cool. And you can kind of tell, okay, this is a trick, you know, you don't have to learn this, but it's, I find it useful. Okay, so you do a, a ps-cd, this will find the process ID given the name of the command. Okay, so okay. The process ID is 1827, so you can do a kill dash usr one and then the process ID, which is 1827. So what this does is it's basically poking that process and saying, hey, give me a status quo. Okay. 
Problem, problem. Uh, not your, your problem, uh, but the uh, issue with your drive. Okay. I'm trying to before I No, no, no. It's probably still okay. You know, it's just that you know, we have to. Um, okay, let me reboot the system first. It's kind of in a hung up state right now. So. 